All right. Let's talk for a second here. All right. I know this isn't traditional. A top five list and not a top 10. Crazy. And no, no, you're not reading it wrong. It says top five worst movies and TV shows of 2022. Now, if you've been around my channel for a while, you might be thinking, man, this doesn't seem right. Five and not 10? 15? 30? As a man who frequently finds himself in slander mode for most of the entertainment that I regularly consume, I would like to inform the masses that I, Darth Grader, lover of slander and hating connoisseur, have made a responsible decision and have decided to turn a new leaf until 2023. Let me explain. You see, while comprising this list and reviewing the countless media that I've consumed in 2022, it's led me to one solid and concisely overwhelming fact. If I made a top 10 worst list instead of a top 5, it would truly and pretty much exclusively comprise of only Marvel Phase 4 filler arc product. And while no amount of slander could properly do some of these shows or movies justice, I decided to choose to be the better man that's mostly locked up in the slander driven mind of mine and did us all a favor. So thank you past me. Anyway, now that you know the no, get out your notepads for comparison and let's jump into number 5. Man, let me tell you, if I would have went back in time to warn a past grader that in 2022, Kenobi, again, let me repeat, Kenobi, an Obi-Wan Kenobi show bringing back the likes of Ewan himself and Hayden to reprise their roles for an epic six episode special was going to be one of the worst things that I consumed in 2022. I damn near would have Captain America and fought myself like an Avengers Endgame because you're obviously trolling. Now let me rephrase, but instead insert the actual plot of the show. If I would have went back in time to warn a past grader that in 2022, an Obi-Wan-led Kenobi show was going to bring back the likes of Hayden and Ewan to recapture some of the magic that the IP Star Wars once held, only to subvert your expectations for the characters that you already know and love, like Obi-Wan now being cowardly, scared, unfocused, and an undetermined man compared to the witty, intelligent, broken, but wiser Obi-Wan that we got at the end of Revenge of the Sith, and Darth Grader being an incompetent idiot who holds no type of weight or respect and would rather just play mind games or send his subordinates out on missions that they're obviously not prepared for, while he, uh, I don't know, sits on his chair, I guess? What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> now that, well, that would have been even more unbelievable than the show even existing in the first place. But hey, here we are. And you better like it, because we're not getting a new one. Oh god, I'm getting flashbacks. Point is, they obviously have no idea what's going on at Lucasfilms. Kathleen Kennedy is the biggest bobblehead I've ever seen in my life. And while I can list off many, many reasons, which I do so in this video if you want to know why this show is so bad in further details. But the characters in this show are atrocious. The show is named Kenobi, but he's not even a recognizable character to most of the people that actually watch the real Obi-Wan. Darth Vader is either sitting on his ass the entire time or having a poorly lit, poorly choreographed and contrived fight with no stakes whatsoever because of the pre-existing outcome. And well, I'm still to this day trying to understand the entirety of the point of adding Reva's character to the canon of Star Wars. He just does... nothing. Her character didn't accomplish anything of significance, good or bad. She was just... there. In the way of characters that we actually wanted to see. And that's a shame. Number four. <laughs> Yo, remember Morbius? It's crazy because it truly feels like this movie could have either come out 10 years ago or 2 months ago. I can't believe this was a film that we all watched, and while I believe Morbius will, and it may already be happening now, become a cult classic, or say one of those movies that are so bad it's fun to watch type of deal, but that wasn't the initial intention of the movie. Or well, maybe it was because they did include that Matt Smith scene. So, actually, who knows? Maybe they were She-Hulk before She-Hulk was She-Hulk. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Point is, Morbius didn't release to seek out the type of, uh, success that it's finding now. Morbius took itself serious. A film that thought it could actually set up some sort of Sinister Six, actually be a mainstay in whatever that 
Sony Spider Universe that they're trying to do, and the most ambitious and hilarious part of it all, and I know that they probably believe that they could do it at some point, get Morbius in the MCU like Venom. <laughs> like, what a bunch of clowns. I truly don't even remember this movie, the dialogue, who knows, the love interest, her name, her purpose in the movie, who knows. I just remember Jared Leto becoming hot because of the cure that gave him vampire powers, and then him all of a sudden just becoming a giant douchebag. Oh, and of course that Matt Smith dancing scene. That's the second time I mentioned that, but that's because Matt Smith himself had to be the man who wanted to do that the most, because what is going on here? Oh, the CGI was also really bad. I could see the vision, if I squinted, of wanting to do something new, but I didn't really understand who, what, or how Morbius could even do or use his abilities. He just did. The movie also could have went in the rated R route just so the blood in your vampire movie wasn't either removed post-production, not shown in the movie at all, or just straight up blue. Like, what the fuck? Anyway, obviously none of the aforementioned ideas or opportunities are actually going to happen for Morbius or Sony because, well, this movie's shit. Number 3. Oh yeah, now we can start licking our chops. The main course isn't here yet, but man... This appetizer will do me just fine. Falcon and the Winter Soldier might not be as shit as for everyone as I find it myself, but there are certain aspects to this show that simply don't sit right with me. Some might call petty, some might call nitpicking, but I truly don't care. Sam Wilson in this show is not Sam Wilson, or maybe Avengers Secret Invasion just started earlier than I thought because the writing that's on display for this character is damn near a travesty. One. Sam Wilson, the sidekick to the most popular superhero in all of the MCU, Captain America, isn't just some black dude. Morgan Freeman, Samuel, Mahershala, Denzel, Michael Jordan, Michael B. Jordan, Jordan Peele, Barack Obama, Jamie Foxx, the list goes on and on and on, are not just random ass black people in my universe. So I can't believe the suspension of disbelief that this show asked me to have that Sam Wilson doesn't have any type of weight to his name, yet alone being broke. <laughs> so funny. Like, broke? What are we talking about, man? Have you seen The Boys? Have you even seen Miss Marvel in your own universe? We have AvengerCon. Sam Wilson, the sidekick to Captain America, would damn near be one of the top 10 most popular people on the planet. Swarming with endorsements, talk show appearances, memorabilia, TV show and movie appearances, I can't even try to hop into the mind of the writers with such the small brains that these guys had. To get into the show, Freckleface Jesus is an idiot character who had no type of relatability to her and just murdered people in cold blood, but told me that she was an anti-hero. Like, yeah, I guess, go tell those families that. But it's not even addressed in the show because who cares? Zemo shows up for around five minutes just to let us know that he'll show up again in some future project for the MCU, just to show up in that show for five minutes and then just repeat the process. John Walker was the most relatable character, but they wrote him to be the antagonist of the show for some reason, when he was the only character that actually made logical decisions compared on emotional-based decisions. Well, fuck me, I guess. And fuck Bucky, because I guess they tried to write down some type of an arc, I put in quotes, because it's not like anything changed with his character by the end. The show even let me know by not changing his name whatsoever to either Bucky or the White Wolf. He's simply just the Winter Soldier. Nice. Oh, and he's nerfed now for some reason, as if we needed our Super Soldier Earthbound heroes to be nerfed with the constant introduction of god-tier characters in the MCU. But eh, why not? Who cares? The racism thrown in your face is so overwhelming and again is unrelatable for even myself as a black guy because Sam is not a normal black guy. He doesn't face those same struggles that were tried to be displayed on my screen and while they had a black character that fit those checkboxes and honestly might have been an interesting character to dive deeper into, it was just so bogged down by all of the force feeding of the, the message that it just became numb by the end of it all. I like Sam's character. And man, did I want to like this show. But God, is it poop. Number two. 
Yes, yes, I know. You must think I'm trolling. Doctor Strange's mom worse than Thor Love and Thunder? There's no way. But there is a way, my dear viewer. And let me tell you, when this trailer first dropped, nay, even beforehand when the project was first announced, this was damn near projected to be the top movie out of Marvel Phase 4's filler arc, except for Spider-Man, of course, but we don't count that over here. Anyway, Doctor Strange's mom is poop, and the reason why that it is the runner-up for the worst movie or show or anime or literally any piece of media that I have consumed this year is because this is a film that not only manages to self-destruct its characters in the present with its amateur character writing, and honestly, that could even be an insult to all amateurs out there, it thoroughly fucks all of those same characters, not going forward, but even the past actions of these specific characters. Wanda's an out-of-control lunatic who will murder multiverse versions of herself to steal someone else's kids because I guess that's what goes through the head of a crazy person who has reality-breaking powers such as herself. There's truly not a soul redeeming quality to Wanda as a character in Doctor Strange Mom, and that basically destroys any aspect of rewatchability for this character because you know that where it's going to lead. A classic Game of Thrones situation. Doctor Strange and Wong are absolute buffoons, constantly flip-flopping their morality for plot device, and never make a sole right choice throughout the entirety of the film. I don't know who Pamela is, so I don't know why they're trying to tell me, the audience, that she's a Mary Jane or Lois Lane type, when I don't even know who Amanda is. And if it's a comic thing, I mean, cool I guess. I'm just saying in the MCU, I have no idea who this Stephanie character is. There's the introduction of MacGuffins like the Book of Ashanti, which combines and furthers my point on how the character writing of this film fucks the character's past. That book would have been helpful against Thanos, but because it wasn't introduced into the MCU yet, it just must not have existed. But wait, it existed throughout all of time and all universes as one universal book? You see what I'm getting at? This film is ass, and the only life raft this film has to try to preserve some life is the Wanda stands. This shit was a dumpster fire, and I'm not ashamed to say that I've watched the trailer way more than I plan to ever rewatch this movie. Ah, uh, number one. Man, this is gonna be a beautiful slander award. We all knew this was coming, right? I mean, this had to be more predictable than the show itself. Wait. Am I Jessica Gao? Man, I was really ascending right there. She-Hulk was not only one of the worst sources of media that I consumed in 2022, but definitely my entire life. Literally, the show was dead on arrival. If you want to insult men and masculinity, fine. It's been happening for around a decade now. I think everybody's used to it. But to insult the fans by absolutely making a mockery of the Hulk's character, a character that has been ingrained into the minds of kids and adults all around the world for over half a century, Destroying one of your most relatable characters in the entirety of your universe, comic, or MCU, because Jen is... a woman? This wasn't a show that anyone in their right mind could get behind. The portrayal of men is not only so imaginatively cartoony, I don't understand how this promotes women in any way whatsoever. Jen is just a conceited and immature woman child that constantly complains about men not loving her even though she's shown in the show in a matter of a two week span to have sex with four different men, while also contradicting her own words by labeling men as a terrible gender because of some drunk dudes at a bar and one sole douchebag that she works with. When she also works with men that are respectful and don't share the same characteristics and are downright normal. Every time Jen talked about her character in the form to inform us, the audience, of what we needed to know about her, what we should like about her, or what we should look forward to, it's all just selfish, contradictory philosophies. And it sucks because Tatiana Maslany is awesome. She's beautiful and has so much charisma just to be wasted on a script that was written by quite possibly the most insecure writers and showrunners I've ever witnessed. If you truly want to hear me rant about this dog water of a show, then I'll leave the link in the description. You won't be the only one. It's my most watched video. Anyway, I just felt more years drained from my life, so there we go. My top five worst movies and TV shows in 2022. Man, it feels so untraditional to do just five, but what am I to do? Subjugate myself to the Rings of Power or the new Witcher series? Like, that's crazy. Or just make a top 10 list, but seven of the 10 are just Marvel Phase 4 filler arc products? What's the point of reiterating the same slander? Look at me. 
sounding like a scroll. Thank you guys for watching the video and I want to thank you all for watching and supporting my channel throughout the year. We're truly just getting started and I'm blessed to even have this small of an audience to share my thoughts with. My last video of the year is going to be a traditional top 10. Crazy how many good things that I watched this year. I'm even going to have some honorable mentions, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Thank you for watching the video and like and subscribe to Party Up With The Squad. I'll be in those comments seeing your list, traditional or not. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Happy New Year's.